Hey everyone, Matt here from Doctor Running, and today we're going to do a full review, 100 mile review, and talk about who the Socket Endorphin Speed 4 might work best for. So this is the latest update that we've been waiting a little bit for to Socket's super lightweight trainer slash super shoe alternative to some of the more stiffer options like the Endorphin Pro and Endorphin Elite. It's been very, very popular over the last couple of years. Very big changes. This one also has some big changes, but it really seems to mesh some of the positives of the Endorphin Speed 3 and 2 together. In my opinion, takes a little bit of the aggressiveness from 2 and melds it with a little bit more friendly version of version three and does a great job of integrating those together there are changes in the upper changes in the sole but the things that make it a speed are still there still a nylon plate with a little bit more flexibility still full length power on pb but how that's accomplished let's talk about that first before we go any farther let's say some specs here so 8.2 ounces men's size 9 uh 7.2 ounces women's size 8 36 in the uh millimeters in the heel 28 millimeters in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop it is coming in really nicely as a shoe that does great obviously for workouts with the full length power on pb so there's plenty of bounce here but also with the flexibility is great for easy runs if you want something like that or long runs has been one of the areas that this is shine i've used it for all three of those workout whites have also done temple runs have done fart licks hill repeats intervals it's done really great if you want that kind of shoe that can do everything with those super shoe components that still not so stiff that it can tolerate some training in terms of how it feels the thing i do have to warn you not warn the heel felt a little bit clunky when this shoe when i was first running it the first couple miles i think that's partially because there's some significant more significant sole flare here which does make it more stable in the heel and we'll talk about that in a second it just no i felt like the heel was kind of blocky at first once i transitioned to the midfoot and forefoot that was totally fine so people that land farther forward you're not going to notice this at all but i did and when i stopped fighting that it actually compressed really well and bounces really nicely off the heel when you actually start running in it it once i got past that this these cutouts here actually cause the lateral aspect to compress just a little bit more and so when those break in it's actually really 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 nice the other thing as i mentioned the heel is really nice and guided and stable for a super shoe it's not a stability shoe but the sidewalls that are still in pre present the extended plate the, the sole flare does a great job of making the rear foot feel a little bit more stable the midfoot feels a little bit less stable in a more neutral way not unstable it just narrows a tiny bit more than the before and i noticed this when i was on longer runs in my midfoot it's kind of started to get really fatigued it's just a little bit more neutral there if that's something that you need or want or just need to be aware of once you get to the forefoot there is actually a fairly significant sidewall on not significant but noticeable sidewall on the medial side people that need some medial or like some lateral guidance here at the forefoot you're going to do really well i actually really enjoy this one of the reasons this shoe has worked really really well for me for the people who don't like that be aware that that's there so in terms of how it feels like i said good amount of bounce still from the power on pb feels a touch firmer than the last version and a little bit softer than version two so it feels again right in that nice middle plenty fast enough to do workouts not aggressive enough to still be able to handle uh easy runs and as i said it's done really really great for all that stuff the four foot flexibility feels a little bit more flexible than the last version that might be because i also now have 100 miles on them but it feels really good and enough that it's it's again like i said can handle easy runs the upper is where things have changed a little bit where i found that version three felt just a tiny bit short not enough to cause me problems but just something that i noticed and didn't even mention the version four now has a tiny bit more length not enough that's going to change sizing for you but just know that that was a nice change the midfoot has a lot more volume than i was expecting so much so i really as you can see had to tighten down the laces to get a secure fit once i did it was totally fine just be aware if you have want a little more volume the speed four might actually work really really well for you heel counter is a little bit flexible here just like the last version not too different so those are the big things about this shoe and what's been updated i will say the speed series is still an awesome option for people that want a little more flexibility in their super shoes it's got all the components that like taller stack height little you know super foam stuff it's just got a little more flexible paint People get really psyched about, oh, I want a carbon plate or I want this or that. Stiffness only adds a small portion to the overall efficiency of the shoe. And some people respond really well to stiff shoes. Some people really respond better to flexible shoes. There's a great study by McLeod at all that was done a couple years ago, actually looking at some of the basics for what would become the speed and pro of Saucony, is that people respond differently and respond best to a certain level of stiffness. It's really different. So people may not all respond super well to the Saucony Endorphin Pro. 
or the Vaporfly or any of those carbon plated super shoes. There's going to be people who are going to respond better to racing and other efforts to having a little bit more flexibility. It doesn't make it less of a shoe. It means that we need to have these options. That's why a shoe like the Speed or some of the other shoes like it are really good because they give options for people who may have issues at their metatarsal joints with carbon plates or issues that like the calves tend to overactivate just because it's so stiff that shoes that are too stiff for you, you're going to have to work harder to push off the forefoot. Shoes that are just right and the plate and the, and the stiffness lines up really well with the, your first toe joint and your metatarsal phalangeal joints with your toe joints, that's the shoe that's going to work best for you. So just because the shoe says carbon fiber plate doesn't necessarily mean it is better. It just means it has a stiffness component. You're going to have to figure out, is that something that works well for you? And even carbon plates vary in their stiffness. Or are you going to find another material that maybe works best for you? We're seeing more variations in this, more companies, Mizuno's introducing fiberglass plates in their super shoes. Just know this is really good to have options. So don't just overlook this just because it doesn't have a carbon fiber plate. You might find this might be your next super racing shoe. And it's nice because it's got some versatility into training.